Okay, so this is part two of my portable Pi Zero 2W gaming setup. Uh, so I covered the controller, took it apart last time, and uh, found it wasn't quite wide enough for my display, and also found that because it had a ribbon cable, I was kind of a bit tied to it, but I've had a bit of a breakthrough. Um, so here's my Pi Zero 2W. Uh, which is able to be powered by the Pi Sugar battery, which I don't know where it is, somewhere on my desk, it's a bit untidy at the moment. Uh, but I've just been to the DIY store, couldn't find anything, went to the pound shop and found this chopping board. And I think this will go very nicely with something I just managed to download yesterday. Funnily enough, I found it the same day as I was doing this video, and I'll show you what it is. So let's move this out of the way. And uh, to be able to show you this, I'm gonna have to take my monitor off. Now you can see my monitor, a bit dusty on the back. Uh, it actually comes off this. So let's unplug the power cable and the HDMI splitter and push, which way is it that way? And this kit comes off and then it springs up. So I need to change the orientation of my visa bracket on the back here. So let's flip this to vertical. Don't worry, there is a point to this. And I've got a separate video on the arm that this comes with. Uh, which I did a while ago, it was given to me, and uh, it's been really good, it's been really handy. So let's pick that up and pop it back. And turn it around so you can't see the dust. So <laughs> I now have my vertical monitor. Crikey, it looks really tall like that. And if I remove this Samsung bar and replace it with this one. Actually, I don't know if I've set this up yet. Oh, let's see if it USB boots first of all. It might not USB boot. And switch on. Fingers crossed this is gonna work. Xbox controller and dongle. No, it's definitely not working. So let's switch it off. Switch it on again without any boot media in there and see if it boots into uh, the startup because I've basically written uh, an Android image to this uh, and it's from Arcade Punks and it's a vertical Android image. So it works very well for my handheld build. Unfortunately, it's for Pi 4 and I really wanted to do this video with Pi Zero because uh, it can be powered by the Pi Sugar, which also can power the monitor. But proof of concept, if we get that working with a Pi 4, um, then I'm probably gonna try some sort of uh, retro Pi build, which is oriented in portrait mode. Yes, yeah, so it's not. It's not even doing this. Why is? What have I unplugged here? That that should at least start up with the Raspberry Pi menu. Ah, right. Okay. Ah, right. That's what's supposed to happen. Right. Let's pop the uh, USB stick in, and it should recognise it. Okay. So monitor's gone off. So it's not recognising this. So I think I need to change it to be USB boot. And let's boot up with Twister OS. I'll switch my. Um, USB cable. I bought this back when I bought the U-Green cable, but it's lovely and short, so it really lends itself to this build. And let's pop this in into one of the USB 2 sockets, because I sometimes think two USB 3 drives uh, tend to cause crashes on the Pi. Right, so, unless you use a powered hub, this is not going to be easy with the mouse. In fact, I'll screen capture this so you don't have to do it on an angle, but it's going to be awkward for me. So it must be in boot, config.txt. And I wonder if this is the same as, so boot device. Yeah, so it's selected as SD card at the moment. So I need to put a hash in there, which is usually shift and three. And I need to delete that one that says USB. So USB will then be the boot device. And this is really awkward using the mouse on this angle file and save and is it overclocked i think i read that it was overclocked overclock uh two two quite an ambitious overclock gpu is overclocked to 900 gpu memory 256 over voltage of 10. okay now that will work for me on my 8 gig pi 4. this is so awkward with the mouse right so let's shut that down and try booting again so that's switched off so i can unplug this one now Whoop. What do we reckon? Is it going to be upside down or the right way up? <laughs> it's upside down. It's, it was bound to be upside down. And I don't know if there's an easy way to rotate that. It might be in the, yeah, it might be in the config, but I'm thinking I'm probably just as easy to uh, flip the monitor upside down. 
Okay, so it's a few days later and uh, I've been playing around with this and I've been playing around with various different vertical builds and I really like it. Uh, I've read about uh, arcade cabinets and things being in vertical and people really wanting to recreate that. And uh, yeah, I, I kind of get the excitement. I don't know if it's be just because it's different to what I'm used to because obviously it was a big thing when everything went widescreen but to have something vertical like this you can see some of these things I haven't tried the basketball one but my wife and I always play this when we go to the arcade uh, and often she beats me which is a bit embarrassing because I'm a lot taller than her anyway so this build of Android Madness and I probably can't play a lot of the audio because um, there's loads of music in here uh, it's a real attack on the senses but in a good way uh, if this was in you know, like an arcade type setting. It's really quite an exciting thing to, to have. And I would imagine it even on a bigger screen. This is a 22 inch monitor. But if I click into it, uh, it works very much like all the pre-built RetroPie images, but it's built on Android. Yeah, so this is where the music cuts in. So unfortunately, I'm gonna to have to cut out the music. So you can see it flicks through various different backdrops. Uh, it does lots of like screensaver type things. And, and it just is lovely and bright and colorful and really quite exciting. So if I press the home button on my Xbox controller, uh, you can see that it flicks between, uh, you know, like a sort of screenshot mode, uh, but then press it again, and we go down to this bottom bit here, dig, and then we can go through genres, favorites, apps and web browser, out of my mind arcade, controller games, mouse games, movies and more, music, octopus, there's all sorts of things on here. Um, but if I go into, say genres, oh, wrong button. Ah, and this is one thing about it though. So sometimes you'll get to a situation where you can't go back out of it. So it's not really going to be the build I'm going to use on my handheld. I mean, I'm only doing it to, to play around with it anyway. But uh, yeah, it, it definitely has mouse and keyboard for certain things, right? So genres, first person shooter. So you can see we've got Samurai Sword or Battle Tank on the NES. If I go back, 2D games. And you can see various different consoles here showing the cartridges, which is nice. 3D games, Asphalt. See, there's there's also there's Android games in here. There's some web-based games. There's all sorts of things in here. But the, the thing I was really doing it for was because it was vertical. And a lot of the games aren't vertical because obviously a lot of games aren't. But something like 1945, if I click on that, and let's put the volume back on. Look how cool it looks. Even got the, the CRT bit where it kind of emulates the exact size and everything of it. And B seems to be the fire button on this, I think. But you can see it. I mean, I'm standing behind the camera because uh, of, of, of having to film it. But um, when you're close up to it, it, it really does just feel more exciting to play. It is really cool. And I really do like this vertical gaming. So if I press the home button, that quits out and then goes straight into music. Uh, and you can see sometimes you get these pop-ups, but I, I love the work that's gone into this. Um, it is, there's so much stuff on here. So let's go back and you can see various different snares and N64 games and all sorts of things in here. But this is a video about portable gaming. So under here, I have my 14 inch portable games console. Um, so this has got the controller that I've been messing about with. Um, I'm gonna put it on a seven inch one in the end because actually this is really heavy. Uh, it's not too bad with two hands, um, but uh, I just kind of mocked it up just because I was interested in trying it. Unfortunately, this Android build doesn't boot on it. Um, I, I can't quite work out why, because I use Android on this uh, in previous videos, but I just can't get it to work uh, whether it's something to do with the vertical bit or whatever, but I can't get it to work. So I've attached this chopping board uh, to the back of my tablet. Because the controller is basically too short with this ribbon cable, I did manage to get the ribbon cable. I managed to break the ribbon cable. I put it in my community tab. Um, when I was drilling through these holes, and they're just cable ties at the moment, I managed to, um, well, it got to this sticker part and it seemed to catch on it in the drill. So this span around about 10 times, ripping the cable out of here and kind of creasing the cable. But I'm glad to say that it still does work. Inside it's got a clip connector, so it's really easy to actually connect it back on and taking out all the screws. And I did have a tip about being a screw under this um, sticker. Actually, this was the one I tried to um, take apart. I needed to take apart this one and uh, it just took out the screws and it came apart and went back together absolutely fine. So it's attached with my chopping board and you can see here 
that I've got uh, a bolt, a screw, and also a plastic washer. A plastic washer against the back of the tablet so that I don't wreck it. And uh, yeah, that seems to work. It holds it in place. I could have done it more straight, uh, but I was just kind of messing about. Um, you can see this controller is slightly further over, so I could I could move the holes. I could even do it as holes uh, where they're elongated so I can move it across. That would make it better. But I don't plan on keeping it on this because it's pretty cumbersome. You know, it works, but it's pretty cumbersome. Right, let's get it connected up just to show you that it is working. So I have here my Pi Zero 2W. I have the Pi Sugar battery on the, back, on the back of it as well. Um, I've got micro to USB-A. So if I pop that in the middle socket, which is really important because that's the one that gives USB support for devices and that's what I need the touch display to work on. Cable-wise, not really very happy that I've got to use this, which is a, a mini to full size because it's the only one I've got. Now, I definitely could get a ribbon cable. If I plan to use this particular build, I would get a ribbon cable which had a 90 degree um, flex in it and it, it would make it really neat and tidy and I could put the pie wherever I wanted so it would be much, much neater. So this one in here, and I don't recommend this because you could definitely end up breaking your your pie or your sockets because I'm putting quite a lot of strain on this. Pop that in the top with a USB-C adapter, which I'd forgotten about. So USB-C on here, so that's A to C because the monitor uses USB-C and one of these sockets, which is that one there, is the one that it fits in. Whoop, this is so dodgy. And now there's a button underneath here that actually switches it on. Uh, oh, it's this side. Yeah, there's a little tiny switch. And if I flick that switch, I think it was probably off at the time. And as you can see, it's booting up, boots up in landscape mode. And uh, obviously then it'll switch to portrait. I have to change something in the config.txt. I'll show that in a minute. So you can see I could probably do with changing my background. But this is a touchscreen device, but the touchscreen has gone a bit weird. Uh, and there is definitely a way of doing this. Again, I'm not keeping this as a build because you can see that's definitely putting pressure on my pie. <laughs> that is not good. Um, but uh, if I get my keyboard out, I can at least then control it and I can launch something. Games. I'm not sure how Tux Racer works in full screen. Is that going to be full screen? And here we are, totally handheld, um, but uh, with a lot of cables at the top. But imagine if you could get rid of those cables at the top. That would definitely help. I don't know what the buttons are on this. Oh. There you go. So as you can see, this actually works in, in vertical and looks quite nice, actually. But I'm not going to do it like this. I'm going to switch over to my monitor on the, st whoop, on the stand because uh, it's just a lot easier than using this configuration. But it is completely portable. But as you can see, it's a bit of a mess. Uh, and it is, it is really too bulky um, as a handheld. So let's switch back over to the screen. And let's turn this off, although I am super impressed with it. I really wanted to carry on with the Zero 2W, really. So let's shut this down, F5, and uh, power off. And let's switch everything over to my Zero. So controller in this for USB hub, power, uh, which needs a USB-C to micro USB adapter, which is in there. Uh, that will plug into the Zero HDMI, mini HDMI adapter. Right, so. That's all plugged in. Just need to switch off and switch on again. So you can see this all boots up. Uh, because I've changed the config.txt in this, this all boots up in this mode. Which definitely, if you're planning to do a vertical console, uh, you definitely want that to happen. But also if you're doing it on an arcade cabinet or something in vertical, it's great to have it all in this mode. And I'm gonna be using my Xbox 360 controller. So you can see the one I've been messing about with is arcade. Uh, and so if I click into this, Battery, 20%. And so something like, well, I've already done 1945, so let's do Bomb Jack, uh, which is a great game in vertical mode. And see the cool way it all starts up, checking all the ROMs and the RAM. And what a great use of this screen. So select to pop a coin in, let's pop two in. This just plays really well. I used to play this in the local leisure center and uh, many years ago, and it just is a great game. Really, really playable. And you can see that it totally lends itself to this view. You know, I've been playing it in 
like a landscape mode. Oh, I missed that. I've been playing it in landscape mode. Oh, I missed it again. Because, uh, you know, I've only had monitors that are like that. But really, really good. So let's quit out of that and show another game. Here we go. Let's pop our coins in and start. And it just works brilliant. And you got the grenades with the second key. I don't know, I'm missing this guy. Another game I remember playing in the arcade. It's fast paced and just, just really enjoyable to play. Oh, oh, oh. Let's try a grenade. <laughs> nice. I even like this, the version of this game on the Spectrum, but this one is way, way better. Oh, I was trying to catch. Can I get them? No, nowhere near that. And then it gets a bit more difficult as time goes on. And you can see here, this is the one that I used in my RetroPie on Raspberry Pi Zero 2W. I've just flipped uh, the settings to make it run in portrait mode. So let's switch that off and put my monitor back to as it normally is. Okay, so all back to normal now. Let's switch into screen capture and I'll show you what I changed in the config.txt on that RetroPie build. Okay, so pop my micro SD card into this copy of Twister OS. And let's go into the folders. So you can see here, I've got boot and RetroPie. Uh, if I click on boot and go to config.txt down the bottom here, and here it is. Uh, so display underscore rotate equals one, rotate the display 90 degrees. And there's a few other settings you can use to, to rotate it to get exactly what you want. But I'm going to change this back now. So I'm going to just put a hash in there so I can go back to it at any time if I want. And let's just save that. So now it's back in landscape mode. It lends itself to my next build which is going to be one of these seven inch displays. I'm not sure which one yet. Uh, I'm still deciding which one works best for this particular build. Um, but here's the controller without the 14 inch monitor. So it's pretty, pretty light, um, but also I can obviously make whatever holes in here to attach the device to it. Anyway, I hope you like this. Hope it helps. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.